What is up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Nickel City Rush Hour and Red, White, and Bills. Yes, we are streaming live to both channels. First time we've done that in a very long time. So if you're a Nickel City Mafia member and you haven't checked out the Red, White, and Bills, I don't know what you've been doing, what you're waiting for. Get on and go over to his channel and hit that subscribe button. And hey, if you're over on the uh, Red, White, and Bills and never heard of Nickel City Mafia, again, don't know what you've been doing, but head on over and give us a, you know, hit us, give us a sub. We greatly appreciate it. But it is that time, boys. It is that time. We are what? Less than, is it less than 30 days, Jake, from the draft? Less than 30 days. Yeah, we're uh, we're less than a month out here, Mike. It's unbelievable. Wow. And now it's time to kind of dig into those position groups that, you know, we've been doing mock drafts and you hear about the the guys at the top, like the first, second, third rounders. Um, You're going to hear some of those again today. But you might hear some surprises that you haven't heard about. And we're going to get into it. Each of us are going to have uh, two centers that we're going to present that we think might be prospects that the Bills should be targeting in this draft. Sean, how are you doing tonight, sir? Doing pretty good. Good to be back doing some content with you guys. Happy to be here. You look or, ex- happy to be on my channel as well. Yeah, <laughs> you look excited because we know you love the trenches. We know I that, do. right? That's all you love to talk about last year. Man, huh? you were fighting tooth and nail to just people to recognize how good that yeah. offensive line was, right? Nobody wanted to listen, though. Nobody wanted to listen, and <laughs> and you were right the whole time. And then towards the end of the season, everybody was saying how good that O line was. And then Jake, we got a little bit of a surprise. I mean, going in the free agency, I don't know about you, I didn't think center would be a concern at all. We had Mitch Morris, we had Ryan Bates, and then things changed quickly. Were you surprised yeah. by that? Very surprised. Yeah, I, I had heard the rumblings about Mitch Morris being a cap casualty guy, but never did I actually think it would get to that point. I mean, it was pretty immediate. So uh, I think they, you know, maybe they had a number in mind. Maybe they were potentially going to restructure him even. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, he's gone and and now we got to somehow replace and, and fill his shoes. So as of right now, Connor McGovern is the starting center. But, you know, talking with Sean and talking with you know, the group together here. I mean, we want to talk about a guy that can come in and, and make an impact immediately so we can potentially keep Connor McGovern at the left guard position and have David Edwards still be that rotational guy, or maybe just play on heavy package. Yeah. I think that's a great idea because you like, like Sean's been preaching, you're just going to have to change one position, right? One position on that line. He's got great players to the right of him, great players to the left of him. That's going to help any young center out. Um, So I'm excited here. What do we got here? Let's see here. That's a great, uh, that's a great name. Great hand. Suicide Jay. hotline. Suicide hotline <laughs> number J A 17. I'm here to hit the like button, but can't stick around at the Sabres game, watching them get blown out by the senators. They need at least three in the third to, to tie the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, five, nothing at the end of the first Ooh. period, Mike. And now it's five to two. So, uh, wow. yeah, it looks like they're, they're heading into the third period then according to suicide here. Yep. That's what he's saying. Uh, thank you for joining us and hitting that like button to a side. Uh, what's this? Trey White out. What's this? Is some well, he news? officially signed. Well, he signed with the Rams yesterday. I don't know if you saw that. But, oh, no, uh, I knew that. Well, we did I, talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. He's making it seem like he was out. I'm like, okay. No, like, no, no, no. Something changed? No, just out of Buffalo. And uh, we wish him well, man. You know, glad to see that he got another contract. And you can't have any hate towards that dude. I mean, he gave it his all here. And it's just unfortunate. You wanted him to. Finish his career as a bill, but now he's going to finish it as a Ram, most likely. Well, let's see. Jake wasn't alive the last time they were in the play. <laughs> 2010, I was actually in high school, but, you know, who's counting? <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it here. We're going to try to make this a quick uh, stream tonight. I feel like, you know, we're going to have draft targets. Uh, we're going to be sh- shoving them down your throat here. We're going to start with the uh, center. We'll have more throughout the week on the different positions, but – I think, Jake, you're going to start us off with your two centers that you think are legitimate guys that the Bills should be looking at. And then, Jake, when you're talking about them, again, because of what happened, like, kind of tell us where you think the Bills might be going after a center. I know you're big on still going wide receiver number one. But when you're talking about these guys, like the first guy you got up there, you're saying projected round one and two. That tells me if you're going receiver one, you might have to go center number two to get this guy. Right. Talk to us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Zach Frazier is almost a lock to for sure be at least a day two guy. I've seen him climb into the ranks of being a, a day one pick. Uh, I think he was actually mocked to a team in the first round on Daniel Jeremiah's second mock draft that he did. 
Um, so he's kind of a, you know, a tweener there where he could go first or second round, but I don't expect him to slip into the third. So it definitely have to be one of those two rounds that the bills were, would be able to take him. Um, but this kid, man, I, I've watched a lot of tape on him and strong, very, very strong. Actually his, his pro comp is AQ Shipley, which I think suits him very well. Um, at six, three, three fifteen, he's pretty, I'm not going to say he's huge, but he's pretty normal average size. Right. So which is crazy to say 63315 is average size, but that's just the reality of the position this day and age. It seems like the center position, for whatever reason, is getting taller and taller. As you can see, I mean, we will be able to see with some of our other prospects on here. A lot of them are 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 so uh, Zach Frazier just right in the middle there at 6'3". Um, but what I like about him is that he just, I mean, he is his football IQ is through the roof. He did really, really good things at West Virginia. He has extreme athleticism. He's able to get to the second level. Um, he pulls from the center position quite often, actually, on his tape. I don't know if you, you guys were able to watch any of it, but it's so damn impressive uh, the way he's able to work to the second level. Um, so that's one of the things I really like about him is just his overall athleticism, and that would actually um, fit really well with what the Bills' scheme is. Mitch Morse was able to do a lot of things like that too. Um, you know, I – one thing that it's going to be hard to replace, you know, switching Connor McGovern to the center position, seeing if he can do all the same things that Mitch Morse could do from that much of an interior position. Um, it's not the easiest thing, especially at the center position. So Zach Frazier gives us that opportunity. Um, and to me, I I've done a couple mock drafts where I've uh, actually traded back into the second round and I've gotten an additional second round pick and I've taken Zach Frazier and then Xavier Leggett. And uh, that was more or less just taking the two best players available too at that at that exact spot. So I love this kid uh, excited for an opportunity to potentially draft a kid like this and uh, want to get your guys thoughts real quick. Go ahead, John. Yeah. Well, one thing I'm surprised you didn't mention Jake was his grittiness because oh, yeah. he had that, he had that injury instead of, you know, just laying there getting a timeout call, the yep. crawled off the field, you know, like, like love a man. That. So, yeah, you know, and then, like you mentioned, getting to the second level and having a good IQ, that's two really important parts for a center, especially in today's NFL. And this guy's got it. And, again, I used to think, like, oh, you don't want to be too tall, but, you know, you got guys like Mitch Morris who are 6'6", so 6'3", mm -hmm. 3'15", absolutely perfect build. And just for everybody listening out there, there, there was a stat that I listened to today. I told the guys about it. There's been 11 centers drafted since 2006 in the top 40 10 of those 11 have either been all pros or pro bowlers or both. So what I was saying a couple weeks ago is that I've never seen a, a, a early round center bust in my lifetime. I feel like, and I was, you know, I was just talking at the same time, but there's a statistic that really proves that once you get a, you know, a center early, oftentimes they're going to come out and be game changers right away. And center is one of those positions where it can really make your team good when, you know, things might not be looking too good for you. And we have a great offensive line to begin with, but if you bring a guy like Zach Frazier in and you, you move McGovern back to guard, we're, we're, we're laughing again. We're, we're, we'll probably even break the top oh, yeah. five. We were six last year, but this is this would be – I would absolutely love to get a guy like Zach Frazier because, you know, JPJ was like the, the, the pipe dream. But, you know, I've seen uh, some Panthers channels talking about getting Zach Frazier at 33 – that's like a realistic, uh, you know, position for him. And honestly, I would, I would get him at 28 if he's there. You know, if, if I was the GM, yeah, yeah, if I was the GM. But it. unfortunately, we have Brandon Bean, and I don't think he'll get a guy like Zach Frazier. But, but he's a uh, man. I just, oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, strong, the powerful, Bills... fast, quick, good feet. Man, would love yeah. that. Would love that pick. The Bills are in a position to take the best player available, in my opinion. The receiver class is so deep that we can afford to, if we really want to focus on the receiver position, you can probably afford to wait until the second round. So if this kid's available and you have guys like A.D. Mitchell or Troy Franklin who are like those fringe guys who you're not too sure on what type of player you're going to get in the pros, they lit it up in college, but there are some small inconsistencies. Um, it might be something to consider. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I want weapons and this isn't always the sexiest pick, but it is, I think, worth the pick. Uh, this kid is going to be good at the next level. I think he's going to be a Pro Bowl caliber player. And I'll say this too. Most of the time, Sean made a really good point. A lot of times when teams are taking centers in the first round or in the first 40 picks, even they're going to hit 
there's only one guy that I could really think of that I've seen in recent time that didn't really um, land, and that was Billy Price for the Bengals. But otherwise, man, I mean, you talk about some of these centers, they're generational, and they're on their teams that they were drafted by 10 years later. So to me, um, I think if you're going to make the move, do it, and it's you know it, it better be a home run. But uh, I, I would feel very confident with this one. Yeah, I like everything you guys said. I mean, he, he's a shoe in if he's available at 28 because he was a decorated high school wrestler. So you don't know McDermott's going to be all over that. Oh, yeah, that. loves that. And uh, so I love that. And I want to ask you guys, so it's kind of interesting when I'm looking at when I've been doing the research, you know, they'll tell me this guy's a little small for center. And I'm like, what do you mean? One of the guys I'm looking at that I'm going to be talking about, uh, he's 6'4", 303 yeah. pounds. And uh, very similar to Mitch. You know, Mitch was a 6'6", a little taller. Um, he's around a little over 300 pounds. But what's that sweet spot that people are saying that is perfect for a center these days, Jake? Yeah, you'll see it. I mean, this is kind of on the shorter end. Like I said, this is kind of mid-tier now. That's 6'3". Uh, <laughs> to me, it's um, the whole, I guess, the concerns about the quarterback being shorter than the center. They're long and, and oh, they're gotcha. gone, you know? Yeah. So uh, you'll see, I mean, as of recent, a lot of these centers that have come in, they're six five, six six, Mike. So, uh, yeah, it just seems like they're getting taller and taller as we go. Love it. So that was the thing. That's why they're saying, you know, back in the, like Mitch was a tall center. And that was that mm -hmm. the concern because you got a Doug Flutie back there trying to throw over yeah. six six guy. Yeah, and exactly. You, you don't yep. typically have those uh, issues anymore. Right. So love the pick, Jake. Love the pick. And, and I want to uh, say, so the only the only thing he actually did at the combine was the bench press. He benched thirty times, two twenty five for thirty times. So, um, I don't love I don't love these players not participating in every drill. Yeah, I think we talked a little bit so about weird. this previously, Mike. But uh, if you're going to do it, you know, have it be one of your best drills. If you're doing it thirty times, it's pretty damn good. So we'll take it. Love it. Not bad. All right, I'm going to move on to my next one here. So, next up on the list. We have a Penn State guy, Hunter Norzad, out of uh, Penn State, like I said. Very similar in size here, 6'3", 317. Uh, he is a super senior. He's 23 years old. And for him, same deal. The only uh, only skill set that was tested uh, outside of the on-the-field drills was the bench press, and he did it 27 times, which, again, solid, solid reps there, solid job putting those numbers up. With him, um, one of the things I really liked about it uh, was just uh, his athleticism. I think he's a little more raw than Zach Frazier, but he's a good alternative. So if Zach Frazier is not there at 28 or 60 or whenever we do pick, this guy we can grab down the line in round four, most likely, maybe even round five. I would say round four is probably more realistic. Um, but for him, man, it's it's just another another good fit, very similar. Really good job of getting to the second level for him. Um, perfect in the zone blocking scheme. Uh, does a, a tremendous job on angle blocks, able to get his hands inside. He drives his feet nonstop and he finishes. And that's the most, that is something you you love to see on tape is guys finishing. You play to the echo of the whistle. And I know that is like super cliche to say, but this guy literally does that. So he's got a little bit of a nastiness to him. He's got that tenacity. And that's what you like to see out of a guy, especially on the interior of the offensive line. So uh, we need more of those dudes on this offensive line just to keep up the uh, the reputation that we had from this past season. So um, would love to get a guy like this. If we can't get a Zach Frazier or a guy in the earlier rounds, I think this would be a, a great get in the fourth round for us. Hunter Norzad. Is there any, did he, has he only played center in his career? Is there any? Yeah, he's only been a center. Player? Yeah, he's, okay. he's never. Now, I think he does have the athleticism to play guard, but to me, center is definitely a more natural fit for him just because he's played his entire career. I'll tell you what, the picture scares the hell out of me, so I'm signing. I know, look at that, huh? The war paint, man. You got to <laughs> love it. Yeah. Sean, you got any thoughts on uh, on Hunter? Yeah, so when I was research, doing my center research in the beginning, um, he was one of the guys I first noticed, and I knew Jake was going to like him because he's a Penn State guy. Oh, yeah. But um, from what I remember, and Jake might might be able to pull up the PFF stats, but I'm from what I remember from a couple weeks ago, I feel like he performed pretty well versus Ohio good State. teams and that's that's one thing i look at i'm looking at for every position in this draft is how did you perform against good teams i don't mm -hmm. care how you perform against the bad teams or the you know the poor teams or or whatever i only want to see what you do against the great teams because that's what we're going to be playing in the nfl so um i was pleased for that and like it says here projected in the fourth or fifth round so if we maybe ignore the position you could get a guy like nurzad 
and he gets he can come in and start. And yeah, he might have a little bit of you know of work to do to be elite, but he can come in and definitely be better than what Connor McGovern could probably be at center and then put McGovern back to guard. So, and then again, we do a lot of zone running. Mitch Morris pulled a ton. So I just think he would, he would fit perfectly. And, you know, I like to see Aaron Cromer get his hands on him and, and mold him into something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Turn on the Penn state tape. Like it's crazy because he didn't grade very well on PFF, but I don't love PFF. I'm more about the eye test and what you see out there. Um, I thought he he had a really good game against Ohio State. So that's that's one of the you talk about like playing well against bigger competition. I mean, he went up against Michael Hall, which, you know, he's a projected third round pick himself, third or fourth round pick. So um yeah, I mean, I, I think uh I mean the, the best part is too with Big Ten offensive lineman, man, technically sound. I mean, any Big Ten offensive lineman, any starting Big Ten offensive lineman, you know they're gonna have great technique. So that's one other thing that I love about this kid. And Brett, we're not moving the on guy, Brett. Brett. We miss you, man. Soon, <laughs> soon. Me and Big Al both played center. Apparently, I played. Center I played for center in uh, sixth years. grade. Yeah, I did it in sixth grade, actually. Seventh and eighth grade, and then I went to running back. <laughs> I was too fast to play center, guys. I mean, come on! It was it was <laughs> like the only center I wanted to play it was. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll throw a few snaps back to you, and only if the center could go out. Like if you had. You know, a few guys playing. Uh, Ruski. Two, yeah, exactly. If the center can go out for a pass, all right, I'll do it. But no, nah, I was I was too fast back in the love day. <laughs> so I love your pick there, Jake. I, I mean, fourth or fifth rounder. I love that you're bringing somebody because with eleven picks, um, if we don't get one of these big guys early on, it, it's so crazy to me. Like, there's so many directions that this draft could go now, based on the the moves that Bean has made. And uh, I know I've been saying I do not think it's a wide receiver, but there's still a large part of the community. You know, I'm in the minority that still think it's a wide receiver that they're going to go with in in round one. Um, Well, I don't know if you guys saw the the uh, tidbit on the quarterback room. Josh Allen was interviewing with Kyle Allen and Jordan Palmer, and he had talked about his top receivers in the draft class. So everyone's starting to speculate now that the Bills are going to go wide receiver with pick number one here. Who did he say? He mentioned well, the last name he mentioned was Xavier Leggett. And he's like, hey, have you guys heard that dude's accent? And I'm like, oh, Josh, keep keep talking him up, baby. We need that front office to go and get our guy, right? I've been hearing a lot of Troy Frank- Franklin lately. I have, too. He had a private thoughts. workout with the Bills, too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So interesting. All right, well, good yeah. stuff. There's two very good centers I would not be disappointed with. Um, obviously, Hunter Norzad. Isn't that guy going to be day one, right? He's, you know, he's going to be he's a, a day three project. Pick. Well, yeah. what I say is uh, coming in to start the season. Like we want, you were talking early on right. that we we would love to get a guy that we can keep um, uh, Connor over at uh, guard and have someone play center. So um, you never know, though. I love it. Bring these guys in once they're in yeah. camp. I mean, you never know what could happen here, right? This guy could just shine in camp, and uh, Aaron Cromer could love him and say, "This guy's got to be our starter." Yeah. My dad, uh, yeah, my dad was a beast back in the day. Played for Frontier <laughs> High School here locally. He got uh, scouted by o- uh, Iowa State, actually, Mike, and he had a visit out there. I don't think he ever actually took the visit, but uh, they were going to fly him out on a plane and everything. Back then, recruiting was a lot different, too, but just to think about it, man, he would have been playing in the Big 12, and guess who he would have been playing up against in college? Our guy behind me here, Mr. Thurman Thomas himself. Whoa. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. That's wild. Yep. All right, All moving right. on. Let's move on to Sean's guys. I'm, I'm very go, curious. Sean. Well, I know one of them. You know, these guys took out the really, really good ones. I always pick up the scraps. We know this. You know, <laughs> Sean's been on this guy. Wait, who's this? Oh, he's starting with his other center. Okay. You're switching it up a little bit here. Well, I go did ahead. it in order of projected round. So you'll see why. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So Van Pran, 6'4, 298. Big guy, strong, muscular guy. I guess you could, you know, consider him light in the pants co- compared to some of the other guys <laughs> that we talked about at 298. But you know, when you when you think about physical, handsy, tough, Van Pran's my guy. And you know, I I looked at him and you know, guys like in the third, fourth, fifth round, because I'm assuming that we're going to ignore the position. And I'm like, well, if he's there. And we already got receiver and D tackle. Maybe they'll just be like, you know what? We do need a center. So we'll go with a guy like him. But 2023 Jacobs blocking trophy award winner. 
best blocker in the conference. They don't just give that to anybody. So that, that that's, that's SEC incredible. Too. That's the SEC exactly. too, Sean. So a lot of competition. Yeah. And I'm big on that. And like I always say, the most important thing for me is how do you perform against great talent? How do you perform against the teams when it matters most? How do you perform in the big games? And Georgia Bulldogs, they're always up in that conversation of being the best team in the in, in the college football. So um, I had a, got to watch them a couple of times. I didn't watch much college football this year, but you know when I did, it seemed like Georgia was on. So you know I, I liked what I saw from him. The combine numbers: his forty was five two, so not bad. Ten yard split, one point seven. I think you guys talked about it. What's a what's a great ten yard split typically? What was that? You'll one? see it next, but you're looking for like mid one sixes yep. around there. Yeah, so that's yeah. not too bad. That's solid. Three cones, 7.46. Yeah. 20-yard shuttle sprint, 4.82. Go over to his skill set. Praised by the coaches and players alike for high character and leadership within the Georgia locker room. And we all we know, know much, right? We, we all know how important that is, especially for a guy in the center position, because the center position is the quarterback of the offensive line. He's the guy that calls out blitzes and protections or not protections, but he's the one that's surveying the field while the tackles and the guards are in their position. He's surveying, letting, letting Josh know what's going on. So then Josh can make the proper protections and calls. And if you can trust a young guy, 22 years old to go in there and be that leader, that's really impressive, especially in a, in a well-known program like that. Again, thickly built. I love how they wrote that <laughs> was some rude to add 10 to 15 more pounds. That. Absolutely. Get yourself in the NFL, NFL nutrition, and we'll see what happens with them. Quick twitch athlete. That's very important again in our type of offense. We're gonna we're gonna run the ball more than people think. We saw it near the end of the year, we're about 50-50. So I can I imagine we're gonna give James Cook a lot of run. So we need a guy that can run in the zone and gap block scheme, and he can do that. And again, third and fourth round, maybe. Why not pull a pull a trigger on a guy like Van Pran? I like it. Yeah. He reminds me a lot of uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, actually. Very similar in size coming out of college. Both played for the SEC. Um, Lloyd Cushenberry was at LSU. But, yeah, um, a guy that I think, you know, probably a surefire third-round pick, but he'll be an early third-rounder, and he's going to make some team very happy, and he'll be a starter for the future for them. Um, I think he's a little bit raw. I think the size hurts him a touch, but he tested well at the Combine. And listen, for the Bills, you want to talk about a perfect fit? I always talk about the culture here in Buffalo. This guy is your man. So we'd love to see them get him. Yeah, I yeah, love I love, I love Sean, that you, uh, you've you always uh, preached, you know, SEC guys, right? Yeah. They are the best conference in college football. These guys are going against the best talent there there is. And it's always funny when you say, he's, you know, the size might hurt him. He's what, five to ten pounds off of what, what, the, what they'd want. So get some chicken wings in him. Uh, yeah, bulk him up go. just a little bit, but I love it. Um, great pick there. And again, being that he's uh, played in the SEC, I mean, these guys are ready to go. So I would have mm -hmm. no problem taking him. And again, you say he's uh, projected round three. We're going to have to make some moves up the board um, to get a third round pick, but I would love it. If we can't get uh, one of those top guys, here you go. I love Cedric. Great choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't know why I didn't mention this. My brother, Blake, played center. Uh, Dr. Blake Podger, who was nice. supposed to be on our show. He signed a contract with us. Uh, still has not appeared, but he will someday. But, yeah, he was uh, he was a center at Edinburgh University, and he had a pretty bad career-ending concussion, if you will. It was his choice to ultimately stop playing football because, uh, you know, now he's a doctor. So had to make the right choice there, protect his brain, and it was oh, yeah. a smart move. But, yeah, he – he would hit guys so hard. A problem with uh, with Blake, he was great at what he did, but he usually led with his head, and it paid the price. He actually uh, broke the bladder inside his helmet at Edinburgh in practice mm -hmm. the one day, and uh, that was one of his concussions right there, but he smacked that linebacker, that's for sure. That dude was feeling it. Yeah, let Blake know we have lawyers are going to be contacting him <laughs> to get back that money that, yeah. he, uh, that uh, we gave him in that big contract, so hope he's okay. <laughs> haven't seen that's him right. in a while. Where's he at? Oh, we got Oh, he's we been working Trev he out there. Look at yeah, that. hell yeah, Trev. Appreciate you, man. By the way, check out his show. Talking about offensive of linemen, he actually interviewed John Fina a few weeks back. He sure did. And that was fabulous, man. That was a great show. Yeah, it was. He the the interview was was fantastic. Trev really did his research on that one. 
Yeah. Ram 22. We can't believe it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate you, Trav, as always, brother. We got to get together soon. I know we've been talking about it for a while, but we got to collab again soon. All right. Let's move right. on to the next one here, guys. What do you think? Yeah. Ooh, this is the man. Yes, sir. Hell yeah. So note that he's only three pounds heavier than the last guy. You said he's a little size gonna hurt. Him. I said he could be considered <laughs> light in the pants. Well, light look at the, the height. Six five, right? And look yeah, at man. I mean, him. just a complete athletic specimen. And you know, Jake Jake was talking about Mr. Fraser getting 30 reps. Mr. Yeah. Bo got 39 reps at 225. Oh, oh, yeah. Yep. That's pretty damn impressive. It's pretty damn impressive, but but yeah, again, another guy where I'm again, I'm going to assume we're going to ignore the position, and even if it's not ignoring it, even if we have more needs like D tackle or wide receiver, this is a, a round third round three and four where you can get guys like Van Pran and and, and Bo where they could be starters in this league and even be all pros, but might have a little bit of work to do. Might not be you know Creed Humphrey right off the bat, but I absolutely believe that a guy like Bo Lamar can, Lamar can fit into this system, into this offense. Again, he's like Mitch Morris, basically. Mitch Morris was 6'6", 305. So he's like a Mitch Morris clone, except stronger, younger, probably a little bit faster. And, you know, again, it would have been nice to have a guy like Mitch Morris this year still to, you know, to train a guy like him as far as, his, you know, with his veteran leadership. But, man, let's get into some Bo. 22 years old, senior. Again, I mentioned the 39 reps of 225. That's absolutely insane. His 40 was 5'2". Again, pretty solid. And then his 10-yard shuttle, 165, which, again, Jake mentioned, that's pretty damn good, oh, yeah. especially for a lineman. 36.5 broad jump, uh, three cone, a 7.4, 20-yard shuttle sprint, 4.5. Yeah, this guy's just, too. just an athletic you know, specimen for sure. Gets in the block fits with hip bend and inside hands. Runs feet through contact. Some of the, the letters are kind of short, small. <laughs> contact and keeps defenders occupied through the rep. Again, that's another important thing for a center, not to give up on a rep. Push the guy out. If you got a double team and help out, get to the second level, get that linebacker so James Cook can take it upfield for a touchdown. Keep them hands on, keep them paws on them, and keep driving. That's one of the strengths of his game. Process is pre-snap danger and post-snap twist smoothly. Again, that's a, one of the most important jobs of center is being able to read the defense. As Big Al said, you learn how to read a defense. And again, stepping in the NFL as a rookie, fourth round pick, it might be a little bit, you know, nerve wracking at first. But after you get it doing it a couple of times, I, this guy's got the athletic tools and the prowess and the physical ability to, you know, once you get through the the rep part of it. He'll be more than fine. He'll be he'll be great in this league. And again, like I said, if it, in our offense, we're going to run the ball a lot. We're going to do some get the ball into guys like Curtis Samuel's hands. He's going to run the ball. He's going to catch some slants and screens. And when you got a guy like Bo who can race down the field, lay some dudes out, lay the wood, clear those paths, man, I just super excited to maybe get a guy like this. I don't know if we will, but again, absolutely love this guy. Fourth round, we got a couple picks there. So again, yep. if we don't hit one, uh, hit one of these early guys. I wouldn't mind that at all, man. Fantastic. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, and one thing with him too, he brings a ton of starting college experience to the to the table too. And uh, one That's thing that I really one. like about him is, I mean, you could see it in this picture, right? He's always looking. He does a hell of a job of passing guys off and taking guys on when he needs to. He's looking inside. He's looking outside. Very situationally aware out there on the field. And um, I think that's what really stood out to me. And obviously he's just an athletic freak. Now I will say you go to the senior bowl, you look at some of his, uh, his reps that he took against Tavondre sweat. He got absolutely dummied, but a couple, he did hold his own and that's a big dude coming at him. So I think that's where maybe he can improve a little bit is, um, you know, with, with his pad level, I would say overall. And that's crazy to say because Devondre sweat is a, a large human being himself, but he was just a, a touch lower, and uh, Bo Lindner paid the price on a few of those. But uh, I will say this, man. I mean, you look at his how he tested, his overall strength in general, I think it's very good. And he'll be able to at least stalemate a lot of those battles in the NFL just because of that alone. So, uh, yeah, I would love to get this kid round four again. Him or Hunter Norzer are my guys at round four. That yeah. All day. 
Yeah, they're they're again, they were the first two people I looked at. Honestly, I was just like, man, these two guys. And uh, you know, he 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 does have guard flex, but again, I don't mm-hmm. I'm not picking him because of the guard flex. And again, they they seem to think that he might he might struggle a little bit in pass protection, but and they you know they've been saying oh he's great R- being a run blocker that he is it's going to find him some success in the NFL. But again, I, I don't think he's going to struggle in pass blocking as much as they're thinking. And all that stuff is technical that a guy like Aaron Cromer can fix. You know, Absolutely. the heavy feet things like that. Cromer's not going not to look at this guy and be like, ah, oh, you know, he's just he's just a run blocker. You know, he's he's a, he's a prototype Aaron Aaron Cromer type guy. So I would love to see that. And again, let's bring one of these big boys in there. Heck yeah, Travis Kel or uh, Jason Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. Jason Kelsey was drafted in the sixth round at six mm-hmm. three two ninety five guys. So yep. let's just let that sink in, right? All right. This dude, he's got all the all the tools, right? All the athleticism in the world. No reason he shouldn't succeed in this league. Hey, before you guys move on to me, and I thought Sean had the guy covered, JPJ. What? And I guess we're just, we left him off this list just because we don't think we're going to have a shot at him, right? Yeah. But if JPJ was out there and fell, I don't know, anywhere from, you know, if he's available like a 23, 22, you making a move up the board there, Sean, and getting him? Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, like I'm, if, if it's not just, you know, his absolute ability, but just the statistic of 10 out of 11 centers that are drafted in the top 40 since 2006 are all pros or pro bowlers or both. And a guy like him who, who's been touted as the best interior, not just center, interior offensive lineman in this draft and a generational talent, we'd be silly not to. But again, the only thing I'm worried about with that is I know Dallas, uh, their center just signed with Atlanta. So they yeah. need a center and they pick at 24. And you know, they're a big, they're a big lineman team. Jerry Jones knows what he's doing. So I got a feeling if he makes it past 23, Dallas is taking him. But yeah, that is that's be a thinking, pipe dream. You'd have to move up up to twenty three at least. All right, cool. Thank you for uh, sharing that. Um, uh, yeah. uh, again, I thought I, I wasn't looking. I, I kind of ignored the guys that Sean said because I'm thinking for sure one of them is JPJ. Um, <laughs> but here he goes, a little surprise. So I love it. All right, let's move. Well, on we covered them in the AFC East Summit Show anyway, so that's a, that's all good. It's all fine and dandy. But if we have a all shot, right. man, generational guy for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, Mike. Here we go. All right, this guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a warning out there right now. This guy fires me up. Uh, put something <laughs> over your ears right now. Get your cat safe. Here we go. Let's go. Hell uh, yeah. we normally don't play this on offense, but this is your guy. This is your guy. Now I'm telling you why. Okay, first of all, he played center for Duke back in 2020, but the rest of his career he's played tackle. Now. If you go look at the combine, his numbers are off the chart. They have his numbers for center. They're saying in the center, he's like number one. But he really was a t- he's been a tackle for the last three years. But versatility, versatility. A lot of the experts say this guy's going to be better on the inside. They say his arms are too short. It's always a weird thing to me, but the arms are too short, so he needs to play inside. This is your guy. Take him, grab him. First round, second, first or second. Um, you won't be disappointed. And I mean, he's just extremely explosive athlete. I mean, I'm not even going to read your skill set over you. You can read that for me. My eyes aren't that good these days. <laughs> so this dude is just extremely explosive. This is the guy you want. And Sean, just to give you some comparisons. So last year, you always like to see how he played against some of the top teams. Now, unfortunately, he was, a, he was a little banged up last year. So he missed a couple games, but he played Clemson. Um, the first week of the season, Duke did, and he had a rating PFF. And again, I know Jake, you're not a fan of it, but it's a tool, and it's the only real tool that I can use here. But 84.2 pass blocking score against Clemson it was a top, I think they were in the top 10 last year, if not top 10, top 20 for sure. Uh, then he played, he missed Notre Dame, who was injured for that game. Unfortunately, I would love to see him because Notre Dame was also a top 20 team. And then he played Florida State, who was number four at the time they played. And again, Florida State was also a top 20 uh, team. And he scored in 73.3 in run blocking. Uh, unfortunately, Louisville, uh, he missed that game as well. And the only game he really struggled against was uh, North Carolina, who was ranked number 24 at the time. 
And I don't know what happened there. I mean, he, he well, I do know what happened. He gave up four pressures in that game and was only given a 47.1 run blocking score. But this guy, I mean, the experts love him. I mean, all the draft analysts love him. And you're going to get that versatility if you take him. Um, again, it, a, a better version, a much better version of a Ryan Bates. This guy could actually play. I don't think he'd start day one, obviously. He's got to get... He's used to playing tackle. He's got to work a little bit, um, you know, get that back under center experience going. But who knows? I mean, again, you come to camp and you you remember those days back when you're doing uh, the center position. Maybe it just comes back like riding a bike and he, he shines. And this is a guy I feel like that could definitely contribute year one. Certainly. Yeah. Love it. Um, his pro comp is Cody Whitehair, which I think is great. This is a dude that's extremely athletic, versatile. Um, and I think, yeah, maybe even a better version of Ryan Bates, Mike. So we just lost Ryan Bates. So why not take a guy who's similar to him and, and put him at the center position? I think this guy can absolutely do it. I think his home in the NFL is definitely the center position. Uh, you know, with him, it's just incredible body control does a great job working to the next level. And when he gets a hold of you, you're not going anywhere. Like you're just, he's just going to move you like a freight train. So uh, yeah. And, and he's projected a first to second round pick for a reason. I think he's an early day two pick and a late day one pick. So um, a guy that you might have to consider taking. Sean, any thoughts on Mr. Graham Barton? Don't make me play the train again to fire you up for him. <laughs> no, I love it. I mean, this, and he's the, when, when you're saying, Oh, Ryan Bates type. So let's all remember that Ryan Bates isn't that great, but this guy, he might not be the best to ever play the game, but he's definitely got potential to be way better than Ryan Bates. I tell you that. But <laughs> I was just any, comparing any, him for versatility, right? Exactly. Yeah, right. I was going to yeah. say he can actually probably legitimately play all five positions. Like Ryan Bates, you know, he could, but is he is he good at all of them, or just good at one, bad at the next? I think this guy can be that versatile tool, and if he if he is playing center for you. And then, you know, Dawkins goes down and you don't feel like putting a uh, Van Denmark in. You can throw uh, Barton over there and then you put McGovern to center, but then you're, you're shifting a lot. But it looks yeah. nice to know that you got guys that can do more than one thing at a decent level to better, you know, to good. Not just, eh, I don't really know if I want him to go there. But yeah, any athletic freak, I'll take you. I love it. <laughs> yep. Perfect size, right? 6'5", 313. Got to love oh, that yeah. as well. And um and then he wears the blue. I mean, anyone wearing blue coming out of college, I mean, got to take him. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Yeah. Good stuff I'm there. I'm here for it. Uh, Sean, you're bringing all the Dolphins fans in, man. Thanks for uh, bringing love them it. on the channel here. Yeah, I love it. Miss fans, Beautiful. shout out to you. I saw uh, there was another guy in here, too. Who was it? Uh, someone was on here not too long ago. All the Fins fans, you. when you come to Buffalo, you, Shake money. you, you hear this. We're going to remind you what you're going to get there at Highmark. There we go, baby. Third <laughs> down for the Dolphins. <laughs> Third and ten, bring the trains. That's right. Let's go. Heck yeah. <laughs> Ryan said you gave him goosebumps, Mike. So. It, was, it was funny because, um, <laughs> what was it last one, Roy, uh, last show? He said, Mike, you scared the heck out of my cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. That was pretty good. I felt so yep. bad. It's funny. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's That's go funny. on to my sleeper. Um because we've all had a little bit of a sleeper. And again, I, you know, I listen to Sean because he's he's much more knowledgeable about me when it comes to the trenches. And he always likes these SEC guys, which he had one of them on his um one of his two guys as well. Charles Turner is a five-year senior. I mean, he wasn't starting, but he was on the team when Joe Burrow won the national championship. And here he is this year blocking for you know the most prolific passing team i mean they they scored the most points um per game last year and i mean when you when i was looking at him i'm like all right six four three oh three this is one of the guys i was talking about earlier they're saying you know one of the negatives oh he's a little small i'm like what really you know mitch morris was six six three oh five so okay he's two inches shorter but weight is right there i just love the experience that he has He's got um, actually a little bit longer arms than Mitch Morris does. He wasn't, you know, he's a little slower than Mitch. Mitch, Mitch was a second round pick and Mitch uh, um, was just incredible. But 
I love Charles Turner because I was looking at, I was looking here for a team that threw the ball. And I know Sean, you're saying we're going to be 50, 50. I don't really think that's the case. Um, I hope not. I hope I'm right. right. You always say, you know, we want to be throwing the ball 60, yep. 65, 35, something yes. like that. And this guy was fantastic. I think he gave up one sack the whole year. Um, and he played a lot of snaps and this is, he's, he's been the starter now for two straight years. So I love the experience of the size. I love the team he played for. I love the teams he played against. And um, I'll let you uh, talk about a little bit about him, Jake, before. And I'll bring up some additional stats that I have on some additional notes. Yeah, well, iron sharpens iron first off. He got to go up against Makai Wingo, Jordan Jefferson, and Mason Smith all day, every day in practice. Okay, so just that alone should, uh, you know, allow him to to be considered in this in this year's draft. I know some scouts and analysts have him going as a UDFA. I still think he gets drafted sixth to seventh round. He's just very raw. Um, you know, I think with him, you know, they talk about his size, his, so he's six, four, three Oh three, but he doesn't look it at all. His frame is very small for that size. If that even makes sense, his, his reach is good though, which I think will help him in the league, obviously. Um, you know, he can hold up against some of the best of the best in terms of like the zero text that he played against in college. So, um, to me, that was a really impressive thing that I saw on his tape. I didn't, I haven't watched a ton of it, admittedly, but some of the plays that I have seen, he's gone up against some big dudes and has held his own. Um, really, really good athleticism, moves really well laterally as well, uh, and good hand placement for the most part on a lot of his uh, pass sets. So, yeah, I like the kid. He's definitely going to be a project. He's not going to be a day one starter or anything like that. But again, like I said, J- uh, Jason Kelsey drafted in round six, guys. Undersized guy as well. So, Never say never. Anything can happen. I think this dude has the skills and the traits that it takes to play in the next level. Um, let me ask you, Jake. Why do you think he's so raw? He's played a ton of games. The top, actually, more yeah. games than most of these centers we've talked it's about. It's his technique. It's his technique. And I think this is something that the SEC gets a lot of slack for. It, they produce mainly just mullers, guys that are just going to go out there, see a linebacker or see a, uh, you know, a nose guard or a D tackle or whatever it may be. And they're just going to square up and just take them out. And they're going to drive, drive, drive. They can get away with it at the college level. You cannot get away with that at the NFL. Those guys are way too athletic. So to really break it down him compared to a guy like Hunter Norzad, it's really technique. That's the biggest difference between the two of those guys. And I feel like he, you know, he kind of oversteps, he lunges at times and that's where he's going to get caught in the NFL whereas a guy like Hunter Norzad is a little more polished, and that's why he's going to be a day three pick, an early day three pick, as compared to Charles Turner, who might be a late day three pick. Yeah, and, and Sean, before I throw it to you, let me give you those numbers again, those uh, uh, PFF <clears throat> grades versus you know some of those top teams he played in memories at SEC. So first game of the year was against Florida State. Um, I think they were top 10, at least top 20 last year. And right, yes. um, they scored, yes. he had a pass blocking score of 67.8. He then played... Number 20, Ole Miss. Ole Miss was the top 20 team last year. Yep. Did fantastic against Ole Miss. Run blocking score of 80.8. Then he went against Missouri, number 21. Now, Missouri had a rough day, but he only played 11 snaps. I think he got hurt in that game. Yeah. Um, so, rough day there. And then let's see here. Then played Alabama, number eight, 70.6. That's, that's the tape you want to watch. If you're going to watch any tape of Charles yep. Turner. That one right there. And then he just finished out the year against Florida, 83, Georgia State, 83, Texas AMM, 83. Strong finish. Mm-hmm. Um, again, a guy you can take with all those draft picks, bring him in. If you don't, you know, bring him in. Bring him in the camp yeah. and see what he can do for you. I mean, um, like you said, iron sharpens iron. And we're going to have 90 folks in the, on this team at some point during the camp competing for spots. And I would love to see a guy like this get an opportunity, whether he's a uh, – undrafted free agent or whether we pick him in one of the late rounds you know i have my thing says jake is a four to six round four to okay. six yeah. so i'm not sure where you yeah. pulled that one but again it, it really depends on your source <laughs> i i uh i surveyed a couple of different sites and to me i i would grade him out as probably a six rounder just based on his rawness Jake and his rawness. I don't know. Sean, how can you say <laughs> rawness when the dude has played for the lsu i know one I of know. the most Listen, prolific passing again, teams I think yeah, it comes good. down to technique, and you can you can conceal a lot of the bad stuff that he does just because they were such a good team. Yeah, I totally get that. And then, you know, just looking at the experience aspect of it, Mike, like you said, I mean, 
especially playing at LSU. He's played, you know, played on a team with Joe Burrow. So they've, he's been around winning culture. He's been around great coaching. You know, it's, it's nice to hear about. And then one thing I like the most, you know, in a skill set, it shows the ability to hold ground versus zero tech nose guards. And mm -hmm. even though they don't necessarily play, play nose, nose tackle all the time, but I think of guys like Chris Jones, I think of guys like Quinn Williams who can play anywhere on the line, but will more than likely be lining up majority of the game against you at center. And if he can handle guys like that, we play Quinn Williams twice a year. We play Chris Jones most likely twice a year, every, every year. Uh, the Dolphins don't have, have Christian Wilkins anymore, but they still got Zach Seiler. Patriots got a good defensive line usually. The AFC is full of a lot of, a lot of talent. The Baltimore Ravens, got, they got Justin Matabike back. You know, we played the Baltimore Ravens. We played the 49ers. A lot of great defensive lines are coming. So you got a guy that can hold his own against some of the biggest and the, and the baddest. I don't care. I don't care if you're a seventh round pick. I don't care if you're a 50th round pick. If you can do that, sign me up. And, you know, like I said, I didn't watch much of LSU, but, you know, from what from what you guys have talked about and, you know, little clips that I've seen, you know, I wouldn't mind bringing this guy in the building. I, I wouldn't go as far as what you said, Jake, and he might not be a day one starter. I, th I think he would start over Will Clapp. And I'm assuming Ooh. I'm saying that because I want McGovern to play left guard. If McGovern's playing center, maybe, you know, maybe they won't start him. But, you know, give a guy like not this a Will Clapp guy. What's that? You're not a Will Clapp guy, are you? Well, I am, but it's just there's no need. There's no need for him to be a starter on our team. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he's he's not that good. And, you know, six years of NFL experience, six years of injuries. So I would rather, like Mike was saying, why not take a shot out on this shot on this guy? You, you got the same offensive line minus Mitch Morris. You throw this guy in there. Who knows? Give him that offseason with Cromer in the training camp. He might ball out. Going against that Oliver every day in training camp, Daquan Jones. True veterans, true ballers. I yeah. don't know. It might be nice. And again, I, I'm I'm praying that we pick a center. I don't care if it's first or seventh, <laughs> but I'm the more we talk about them, the more I'm feeling like we're gonna ignore it. <laughs> we're gonna ignore I it. But, I mean, yeah. even take a take a flyer on Charles Turner. I think that'd be a great pick for us in the sixth round. I mean, why not? That's so we have plenty of, of late round picks. You may as well use one of those on a center, right? Yeah. So, and you know, Jay, it's not that I don't like Will Clapp, but I just think it'd be better him as as a depth piece, especially with his injury history. Like, if you got yeah. him in the, you know, he could be Torrance's backup, he's backup center, and then Edwards can be McGovern's backup, like he was last year, and he plays heavy package. I think that's that's sweet because because Torrance had to play thirteen hundred snaps last year. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it'd be nice. And then you know, I think it's time for the future at that position. So any one of those guys we talked about. Get one of them, man. I'm excited. And as soon as I heard that stat today about 10 out of the 11 top 40 centers in the last – since 2006 are all pros, pro bowlers. It made, me you want, it made me want to center in the top 40 even more. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sean, I have a question for you. So sure. tell us – I mean, obviously, we, we mentioned all these guys. One thing we didn't really talk about is does he fit uh, an Aaron Cromer? Mm -hmm. player i mean aaron cromer has a style that he likes right what is that style that aaron cromer likes so i guess it could be different uh different opinion for different people to me i feel like aaron cromer guys are physical they're you know able to run in his own in zone run scheme a little bit of gap but just physical and hard working that are able to go to the second level or good with teamwork because you noticed it was more, you know, this past year than the years past where, you know, you were seeing everyone helping each other. So I just think guys that that have actually, you know, absolutely have the, the, the raw physical abilities, but being able to fit in the run in the zone, again, pass blocking is a given, but just guys that are able to do multiple, multiple aspects of the game, not just, oh, he's only good at one thing. He wants guys that are able to do multiple. So that's just yeah. my opinion. I mean, could be different for for other people, but that's what I think. You agree? With that, yeah. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, I actually thought we were going to get away from that zone scheme a little bit last year when we took Osiris Torrance in the second round. I'm like, this guy is a straight line, body on body dude. Like, he is not meant for the zone scheme, but he did a tremendous job. And we didn't get away from it at all. So, all the guys that we mentioned would be a great fit for that zone scheme. And, um, 
again, a little bit of tenacity with all those dudes that we mentioned as well, which you love to see. That's what we need on this offensive line. Yeah. You got to establish the line of scrimmage with a little bit of attitude and athleticism. You know, yeah. you could be pretty, but you could also be a little nasty at the same time. So that's what I'm here for. That's what Aaron Cromer likes. <laughs> Nastiness and athleticism. It's a good, uh, yeah. <clears throat> it's a good recipe. Hell yeah. Got to be able to some Dan Campbell uh, knee biting. There we go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So I'm, I'm one last time, just going to go around the board here, around the horn. Um, Sean, you are okay with drafting center first round if the right person's available, right? Absolutely. Even if it's even if it's Zach Frazier there, you know, if uh, you know, it's it's hard to tell because you know people some say oh Legat can be you can get Legat at sixty, you know, depending on that. But if like the top or what people are are calling the top receivers are gone by 28. And let's say some of the D tackles are gone at 28. Why not? I mean, it'd be tough for me if it's between like a Tavondre Sweat or uh, what's his name? Yeah. Brian, uh, Brian Murphy. Thompson. Byron Murphy. Oh, Byron yeah. Murphy. Byron Murphy. Yeah. 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 I didn't know if you were D-tack. talking about Brian him. Thomas. Brian okay. Thomas. Brian Thomas. Yeah. 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 So if he's gone or like, it might be tough to pick between those guys, but at the end of the day, I think you, I want to say you might be able to get sweat at 60, but then you got to pick between him or Legat. So you, you kind of, you kind of, yeah, you kind of, you know, you know, it's really, really difficult at that point. But again, I don't think, you could, I don't think it'd be a wrong choice for any of those guys. So if you got, you can trade up and get JPJ. If you can get Zach Frazier, I think, I think it's, it's a guy that can change the, you know, make your team better. And for a long time too. And again, like I said, we never had that, you know, since like Eric Wood, where you had, you brought in a center, that you that you picked and groomed and you know we're able to build your offensive line and continue it you know being young and strong we brought mitch morris in in his prime which was great but now it's time to bring in our mitch morris our jason kelsey and get it going i love big l he says i think i think we'll take get a center in the fourth round is that where you want us to go big l would you like us to go earlier if there was one of those uh top guys we talked about be curious i don't know if you guys noticed when i played the the train, all the Dolphins fans jumped off. Like they got <laughs> they off. Did. They're like, that thing went from yeah. up here. It drops uh, <laughs> drastically. <laughs> Pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so Jake, I mean, you've been a big guy about why you still think the Bills got to go wide receiver number one, but I don't necessarily think they have to. I think in rounds one or two, I would like them to. Okay. So are you okay with taking a center? One. In round one. Yeah, I think if he's the best available player on the board, I'm I'm here for it. I think right now the Bills are in that position to just take best available. And no matter who we get, I mean, I looked at our lineup again today, Mike. It ain't bad. We're we're filling out the pieces, and right now we're drafting guys that are going to be the future of this franchise. Guys that should be contributors at the very minimal this year. Your first three rounds, you're talking about guys that should probably be starters on this team day one. Or if they're not starters, they better be playing a lot of uh, a lot of snaps at the very minimal. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. And Sean, I mean, look how many this. look how many picks we've had over the years of being like the third round that yeah. they're not starters or just special team. Like we draft special teamers in the third round. I don't like that. Like, yeah. And but I mean, Terrell Bernard, his whole rookie year, didn't play at all. I mean, yeah. he played special teams. That was it. Now look him last year. Didn't really yeah. have a choice, but yeah. You see that, and that goes like not to get off on a tangent quick, but to my point that I've been making this off season where, you know, moving off the guys at the right time, yep. you got, not, I don't, I don't really count the comp pick for Edmonds. You could have got rid of Edmonds on his last year. No, you knew Bernard was in, if you knew Bernard was that good and drafted him in the third round, why wouldn't you have traded Edmonds? You got like a, you know, you probably could have got like a second round pick for Edmonds, maybe better. Oh yeah. Maybe Without a second doubt. and a fourth or something for Edmonds based off of his statistical, you know, time in Buffalo. Yeah. Um, even though I wasn't the biggest fan of him. But instead of that, we didn't get nothing for him. And then you wasted a year of Bernard on the bench. It, it is like, a especially, blow, man. Especially after what, what he did last year and his first year actually playing. Yeah. What 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 what, what would the outcome have been different that year when we had Edmonds? Nothing. It couldn't have been any worse. You know what I mean? We, didn't even mention his name. Bowl, right? So. Yeah. It, I mean, it we were been banged nice. up as all could be. And it's like, I didn't even once say like, man, I wish we had Tremaine Edmonds. I didn't say that. Which nope. is crazy, right? Like, yeah, yeah. That's where you know it's it's tough because you you got it's it's a hard decision, you know, and mm-hmm. you know we, no, nobody likes to make them, but um, but yeah, that's that was that tangent. But like like Big Al said, the, the fourth round. Look how many guys we talked about that are starters that have great great tangibles. You know, of course, everyone has weaknesses, 
but guys that can come in day one and start, and then we can only have to worry about one position. You put McGovern back at left guard, and you can still get wide receiver, D tackle, safety, whatever in the first three. And we got two fourth round picks, you know, yeah. or again, we don't have a third round pick. So exactly. maybe you can trade one of the fourths and like a seventh to move up into third or just stay put and get two fourths. And, you know, I'm sure there's still great value at a lot of positions there as well. But that's why it's great about these centers that we talked about too is they have no excuse why not to at least try to get one of them. We, we got a seventh, you know, according to Jake, you know, Mike, Mike doesn't believe so, but, you know, Six, six to seventh round pick and uh Turner, <laughs> yep. says he's the fourth, but uh, um, then you I got my sources are more accurate, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then Mike, where did you get the, the four thirds. to six round from? Um, I don't know, I just put all my notes down, but uh, I'll send it to you off, off yeah, yeah, yeah. And but basically, what I'm trying to say is we basically picked, picked guys that could go between one and seven, so there's no excuse for the right. bills with 11 draft picks not to like if we one. can see this. How can they not see it? Like they're, yeah. they, they can't be happy with moving your your great left guard to center and getting Will Clapp. Like that can't be their like. Oh yeah, this is this is right. uh, you know monumental in our in our success now. Like this is the greatest move <laughs> ever. Like they have to be thinking we got to at least talk about one of these guys. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I like I'd what Bigel said. I, I kind of have it a little switched, Bigel. I still I've been saying it since day one. I think defensive tackle in the first round. Um, I know they brought in Austin uh, Johnston. Johnson, who basically we finally figured out he's getting three and a half million one one year deal. Yeah. Um, but again, I would love it if one of those uh, you know, top DTs were available. Oh my goodness, because the defensive line makes everyone behind them better. You can get yep. some pressure, which we lacked severely last year, especially when we needed it. Um, and I would like um wide receiver, but you know, I also want I'm not sold on our safety room. I'm really not. I'm, I'm sorry. Mike Edwards, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. I know if we heard from the Chiefs guys. Um, and plus Taylor Rapp, we don't know what we're going to get from him either. I mean, last year, people were down on him early on. You know, maybe now he's going to, you know, he's the he's the guy. And uh, maybe they'll utilize him better. So I'm not sold on safety either. So I'd love to see us get yeah, safety at some point. Kalen Bullock. Up. Let's go get him, Mike. That's my guy. That's my guy. Right. Um, you know, USC is only, uh, you know, it's a couple hours away. I drove up there. I went into usc i made sure that i was able to get a contact and talk to him <laughs> and uh he definitely wants to play for the buffalo bill so let's go let's make this happen <laughs> what if we but just yeah. traded based almost all of our picks and just got like four first round picks and then just Dude. pick a center pick a, pick a d tackle go. pick a wide receiver pick a safety call of the day <laughs> yeah all right trade, i'm in for that trade the seven picks we got this year and then trade a couple next year and like, yeah let's just Get all first round picks, and <laughs> if you can't hit those four, four first round picks, then we need a new, yeah, new, I love it. new general manager. But listen, I have a hard stop, guys. I'm sorry, I have to end it here. But we got through these uh, the centers. Um, I think we're going to focus on defensive tackles next. We've been talking about wide receivers so much. Everybody's been talking about receivers, so it'll probably be the third day that we do this. So again. Red, White, and Bills streaming live to a show. We saw some of the folks coming in, giving them love. Greatly appreciate that. Hit that like best. button for this young man. He does so much for our channel. So get on over. Awesome. And all you got to do is go to our homepage, scroll down, awesome channels. You'll see Red, White, and Bills. Hit that subscribe. Just got to subscribe right there. Uh, Sean doesn't have us as an awesome channel, which is okay. He thinks we're kind of <laughs> subpar. But Not that's right. anybody is awesome. I get it. I get it. It's okay. But anyhow, guys, I got to call it a day. Jake, thank you so much. It's always fun. Great research. Thank you for putting those slides together. Absolutely. Um, You're the yeah, man. Real quick, that. let me shout you guys yep. out. This is the first time that you've done the rush hour where you've actually did it in an hour. Yes, so baby. I got to give you I'm guys all the, all the credit. I'm about it, baby. Fire it up. <laughs> Hit right, the horn one more time. The train. Hit the horn. Time. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. Out the, horn. out the door here, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Take my guy. Take my guy that I said first round. Second round. Brambar. Have a good one. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.